Do not put your access points above the ceiling tiles. In today's rules for efficient wireless LAN design, we're going to talk about why you should not put your access points above the ceiling tiles. Now, I've had lots of people over my decades in Wi-Fi ask, demand, cajole, talk, do whatever they can to get me to put access points above the ceiling tiles. And I have. Many times when they're like, you're going to do this or I won't pay you. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do what you ask. But I want you to sign this little document that says, you are asking me to have poorly performing Wi-Fi. And they've even signed it. Sometimes you come across aesthetic police. Well, that's too ugly. We can't use it there. And they make you change it. But realize it's going to cause some difficulties. Since this is just a video, and what I really should be doing is taking you on site to show you the results, we're just going to use this one and talk through and do some thought exercises. If you take an access point and you place it below the ceiling tile, the signal propagates however the antenna pattern goes through free space and then eventually it connects with the client device. Hopefully it doesn't go through too many walls and if it does we know we're going to have a loss. If it's a 3 dB wall we'll have a 3 dB loss and the signal will eventually make it to the customer. Now the client device maybe single stream, two stream, could be a laptop with three streams, and it's listening to that information. Have you ever done the following? You've looked and you have an access point and it's not moving. You have a client and it's not moving, say your laptop or your desk, and you watch the signal strength and the signal strength goes up and down and up and down. And you're like, I'm not moving. No one else in the building is moving. The access point isn't moving. The power level going into the access point isn't changing. Why is my client device receiving this changeable RSSI? Hmm? Well, if you take and you collect that data in very precise, small little chunks, sub-tenth of a second level little buckets you're going to put it in, what you realize is you will see you, if the room has multipath, sometimes the energy from the access point leaves the access point and goes straight directly to your client device. That will be one of the stronger signals. If in that same environment, one of the other little bits of RF goes the other direction, bounces off a metal beam, comes back to you, it traveled further. It had to go the opposite direction, reflect, lost a little energy, came back even further. And when it gets back to you, you now receive less signal. If you plot all those little teeny signals coming in, you might see you have a difference, a low set and a high set. That's proof that you have multipath in that environment. The higher ones are the direct ones, the lower ones are the bounce. Sometimes you might see three or four bands of those, depending on where they're coming from. When you average all those bands out, it looks like it's bouncing up and down. Most of our engines that we use in the software that's showing us signal strength take an average and plot a new one once a second. So every second you're getting a new one, sometimes it has all of one, sometimes it has the other, sometimes it's a mix, and thus it's bouncing up and down, telling you, I have some multipath here. Now what happens, now that gives you an RSSI, an average RSSI. Now what happens if we take the exact same access point and put it above the ceiling tile? Now two things could happen wrong. One, when you move it above the ceiling tile, the orientation of the access point stays the way it's supposed to, dome down. And you place it on top of the ceiling tile, dome down. And then your antenna pattern looks the same. The only RSSI loss you would pick up is that little thickness of acoustic tile, less than one dB. Thus, when you take your access point and you put above the ceiling tile and you take some measurements, you go around and you go, hey, the RSSI is pretty much the same. What's the penalty? Why did I? I'm going to just go stick it up there. True. Here's the downside. What else is up above the ceiling tile that may interfere with your RF? The structure that the ceiling tiles are hanging on. 
the wires, the girders, the air ducts, big metal plates that are bent so they have some strength. And now your signal is leaving the access point and bouncing off of more things, causing more multipath, which then bounces around and eventually makes it back to the client. Now the same client in the same position, perhaps getting almost identical RSSI, now has more multipath. Because it has more multipath, the signal is it's receiving highs and lows and highs and lows. It's also not able to decode the spatial streams. So maybe when it was hanging below, you were getting a nice clean two spatial streams. Went up above because of the extra multipath, we couldn't decode that extra spatial stream and I dropped down to one spatial stream. Same AP, same client, same distance, and you're getting half or less the throughput because you broke the rule. You put the access point above the ceiling tile. Know how Wi-Fi works, know how it can affect you, learn the rules, and realize you can break any of the rules and Wi-Fi will still work. But if you want efficient Wi-Fi, follow these wireless LAN design rules. If you want to learn more about Wi-Fi, come to wirelesslandprofessionals.com. We have lots of resources for you there. Thanks for being part of the community.